Welcome to the Beverly Hills Plastic Surgery Podcast. I'm Dr. Jay Calvert, and today I am here with my sugar-free co-host, yeah. Dr. Millicent Ravello. Dr. Ravello, how are you doing? I'm doing okay. And yes, we are on a sugar-free kick starting off the past month or so. Uh, it's good. It's good. Minus, minus the birthday cake that I had today. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just want you to know that I have not had birthday cake, mm. nor did I have Halloween candy, and I am really trying to do this sugar-free, sugar detox for the next, well, I've, I've done it now for five days, tomorrow's going to be sixth, not that I'm counting, because then it's a week on Friday, and I'll tell you what, it's been different. Oh yeah, it makes you feel a lot better. I think, I mean, I think that's where it's at, we could, we should do a whole podcast on sugar and health and detoxing and fasting and all that good stuff. But that being said, not congratulations on making it to almost a week <laughs> with your sugar detox. I'm trying. It's not our topic for today, but I just uh, I thought I might bring it up that that's something you can try. Yes, I recommend. Today we are going to do Facelifts 101, the basic facelift course. We're updating it from when we did this probably in 2019. Mm -hmm. Yep. So it's time. It's time for a facelift 101. This will include everything from what it is, who gets it, when do you get it, to what you should plan for with surgery, how you're going to look after, and what you do for post-op. Let's, let's go through it all and let's do it in 12 minutes or less. <laughs> yes, because this is part of our 101 series. We, we are just hitting the basics. We're going to try not to get off topic, Dr. Calvert, or into the weeds. <laughs> Who are you talking about? What? what do you mean? I have a story for you. Let me tell you about this one time back in Pittsburgh. <laughs> so let's start it off with a story from Johns Hopkins. Okay, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a great story about a ponytail and a facelift dressing. Okay. Do you want to hear it? I would love to hear it. So this rotating medical student went to Johns Hopkins for a rotation. Mm -hmm. I think the attending was Paul Manson, but don't quote me on that. He's now retired. He was the chair of plastic surgery at Hopkins. He did a facelift. <laughs> and the visiting medical student went in to take the dressing off. And you know how we do the dressings for a facelift. We wrap them up and right. then the ponytail the hair, comes out the top. Right. Well, he took the dressing off with trauma scissors, <gasps> which included the ponytail. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so, so he didn't get a residency there, as you might imagine. As you might imagine. That's almost as good as the nurse or tech that shaved a patient's head in preparation for a facelift. Yes. Just so you know, listeners, your head will not be shaved when you come <laughs> in for a facelift. Unless you go to a military That's institution. not part of the deal. But see, here we are. We're getting off topic. Back to the basics. <laughs> Who gets a facelift? So facelifts. Really, I think if you look at who's getting them now, it's anybody who feels that their facial shape is changing, even more so than getting jowls. Right. So as we age, the face changes shape. In youth, the cheekbones sit high, and then the chin sort of comes to a point. You have sort of a heart-shaped face. That's a very youthful look. And even if your face is more, say, square-shaped or round or puffy, you still have that sort of underlying basis of facial structure when you're young. As you age, for many reasons that we're not going to get into, the face changes shape. The soft tissue sort of falls off of the cheekbones. The cheekbones themselves become smaller. And you go from having sort of a heart-shaped face to being more square-jawed. And if you ever look at photos of celebrities over the years, you know, those who are in their 20s, you know, the Angelina Jolie's of the world, and then look at them 15, 20 years later, you'll see it. They still look beautiful. They still look great. But you can see how their face has changed over time. So it's very um, kind of symbolic and very noticeable change with age in the face. Yeah, and that's when to get it. So it's typically, you know, I'm doing facelifts on 45-year-olds, 43-year-olds, 47-year-olds, obviously in the 50s. I think once you're into the 60s, you certainly can get it. But, like, you're kind of late to the game on the facelift. The you game. can do it, and you should do it. But earlier is better. You get better results. They last longer.